Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, we're doing some uh, software tricks and stuff like that, like kind of like a featurette video of the software included in the Samsung Galaxy S5. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I couldn't include all of it in the review. There's just way too many features packed in this phone. In fact, I would have to say out of all the devices I've reviewed, apart from the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, this is the most feature packed phone uh, I could probably buy on the market right now. Um, so let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is from the notification bar, you have uh, two things here. Basically S Finder works like this, it's a search engine designed to search internally within your phone. So search uh, any contact with whatever you're searching that particular title, uh, it'll search up apps as you can see, it search everything within your phone. Then of course you have Quick Connect, which basically is, allows your device to you know communicate directly to another device. The actual notifications at the top here, you can actually control these commands, uh, you can customize them. Uh, you have a lot to choose from, but you can actually choose which ones you want to display. There is of course one-handed mode. Uh, when turned on, if you swipe from the screen, just like that. As you can see, I now have one-handed mode. I can control the entire phone with one hand. Um, the screen can be resized, as you wish, as you can see. Of course, swiping over to the far left of your home screen gives you My Magazine, which is kind of like a news feed of certain topics you'll subscribe to. It's not that great. Uh, it doesn't display much information, and out of all the social networks, you cannot add Facebook. But it has Google+, Plus, it has Twitter. But if you want to customize that, all you have to do is press on the multitasking button on your home screen, hit home screen settings, and you can actually turn off My Magazine in case you don't like that. Now as I progress, I'm actually just going to warn you now that I'm not going to go into Google features, uh, like Google Now and stuff like that. I, I, that's not a Samsung feature or exclusive to the Galaxy S5. Moving on, the app drawer, for example, can be customized to a great extent. You can add folders within the uh, uh, app drawer. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. The way you rearrange and order them can be customized. While in your text messaging app, you can actually increase the size of the text. Uh, while you're here, just simply press the up volume button and the text will increase. And of course, pressing the down volume button will decrease the size of the text. The system settings menu is a huge giant mess. I don't like it, but you know, I have to, I have to cover it. Uh, it's a huge mess, but you can customize this a bit. As you can see, you have quick settings. Basically, is probably like you can say your favorite uh, settings you might want to access quickly. You can edit them by tapping menu and then quick settings. And here you can customize that list. Uh, the list in general, this is the core functions here, all of them from here down there. It's too much. You can actually choose which way you want to choose the layout of the icons. You can have larger, you can have a tab view. No matter which one you choose, it's all just a huge mess regardless of the fact, but hey, you have some slight customization available there. There is a feature called Download Booster, which essentially allows you to connect your mobile data connection, which could be like uh, 3G or LTE, combine it with your Wi-Fi speed and download files that are 30 megabytes in size or larger together. So it combine your Wi-Fi and mobile data speed together. Unfortunately, it can't be used in Google Play apps or Samsung apps, but it can be used on anything else like a random website, if you will. Under the display settings, you actually have this option where the screen will stay on as long as you were looking at it. Uh, the way it's possible is that the front-facing camera is looking for the primary user and trying to read are your eyes actually looking at the screen. Another feature under display is, of course, is adjusting the color, contrast, and stuff like that, and the saturation. So if you go under screen mode, the screen will try to adapt according to what you're doing. So if you do adapt display, it'll try to automatically change the color scheme. Say if you're under galleries, it'll try to make colors a little bit more vibrant. You can increase the touch sensitivity of the screen. So basically it's meant if you want to use gloves. Um, I have tried it with, you know, just putting my shirt, wrapping around my finger and using it. It works okay. You can choose the duration of which these lights will stay on. So they're set for six seconds currently and they're, they're turned off. Uh, you could change the duration of those lights if you wish. Of course, you have a fingerprint scanner, which is basically the home button. You just swipe over it. It requires a lot of accuracy. Uh, your finger must be swiped over absolutely perfect. Apparently, there's an update available for the Galaxy S5 in which the fingerprint scanner isn't as annoying to read your fingerprint. There's, of course, multi-window mode which uh, has this little tab right here on the far left. And sometimes it'll kind of fade out if you're not using it too much, but if you want to use it, it's always activated. Swipe over from the left, and I can say put um, YouTube in one, and then I can put my files in the top. Of course, you can resize which window you want bigger, which one you want larger as the predominant window. So activating toolbox uh, basically has this little circle you can hover around. Move it to anywhere you want on the screen. If you're not using it, again, it also kind of fades out as you see now. But if I were to tap it, you have instant shortcuts to pre-selected apps. 
uh, anytime. There's of course easy mode which basically makes everything larger I suppose you could say. Um, it's meant for people that have, you know, not the greatest vision. As you can see all icons have turned massive and the system UI itself has become very simplified. It's not complicated. Now under accessibility most of the features here are again pretty standard in Android but you have some exclusive features from Samsung. But one cool thing here is baby crying detector which is basically a baby monitor. Uh, what Samsung wants you to do is put this next to the baby and when it's crying they expect you to have it to get the full use of this uh, feature you will have to pair it up with your Galaxy Gear 2 watch which is the second generation of smart watches released from Samsung so if the baby's crying the phone would detect this and then send a message to your smart watch that you're wearing from Samsung and the smart watch will tell you hey your baby's crying of course answering and ending calls you have some uh, gesture commands waving gesture commands you can wave your hand over the device to answer a call so one of the most bizarre and strangest things Google could ever have done in most of their apps is that they have the settings menu on the left side of most of their apps like Google Map for example is on the left side I find this totally bizarre because most people in the world are right-handed the Galaxy S5 tries to compensate for this by you know including this option in um, accessibility so here if I were to open this Galaxy S5 special box click more options as you can see the system settings menu is still on the left but I was able to open it with my right hand so that feature was activated under accessibility, dexterity and interaction, assistant menu, and of course as you can see dominant hand is right. So there's air wake up command, which the phone is flat, I just hover my hand above the phone and the screen turns on without me having to touch it. Uh, this is of course in the option under dexterity and interaction. This is actually in the wrong spot, it should have been under gesture commands, I'll show you where that is. This is actually annoying if to turn off because if you have to find out where it is, it's placed in a bizarre spot. Then of course you have smart scroll, which basically what it does is try to read is your head tilting down. So say I'm reading a web page. Uh, if I tilt my head down, that means I want the screen text to go up and down to follow along with my head movement. Or my tilting device, do I tilt the device slightly? That means the text will start scrolling up. There's another special feature designed in the phone in which you can block certain parts of the screen from being uh, accessed. So if I were to touch anything within this box after I press the dumb button, this side of the screen, I cannot touch anything. If I keep touching it, I won't activate anything. I can only touch what's outside of the box. You have blocking mode in which you can block certain um, notifications. No, not notifications, but rather ringtones from most people. And you do have a filter list in which you have allowed context in which their ringtones and stuff will pass through. There's private mode in which you can actually hide certain pictures and stuff like that and it can only be accessed in private mode so they're exclusive to you you can add more pictures and videos from your files to private mode so uh, if anyone would pick up your phone they can't see it they would have to enter private mode which only you would have access to with a special code under motions and gestures you have something called air browse and air browse allows you to swipe through pictures in your gallery or tabs in your web browser without having to touch the phone you can just wave your hand Moving along in gestures, you have direct call in which if you're viewing a certain contact in messaging or your phone book, as soon as you put the phone to your ear, it'll call that contact directly. And it works okay for the most part. Smart Alert basically vibrates the phone when you pick it up, notifying you of any missed calls or messages. Mute Pause basically has two functions. One is to mute your device when you're getting an incoming call by hovering your palm over the phone or simply turn the phone over and that way it'll mute the call. And it works every single time I've tried it. Smart Pause is a feature in which it reads your face and if you're watching a video on YouTube or the built-in video playing app, while you're looking at the screen, the video will continue playing. As soon as you turn your head, the video will pause. Then of course you have Palm Swipe to capture in which you slide your hand against the screen and it'll capture and as you can see it's just taking a screenshot right now and it's done. Then of course there's air view in which you can hover your finger over the phone in certain apps like say the gallery or the calendar just to name a few. So if I were to go to my Picasso and just hover my finger above and not touch it I'll get some previews for that album. This can actually work in videos uh, the timeline. You actually hover above the timeline and see what that video will be playing at that certain spot. Safety assistance is designed for distressful situations. For example, if you had a primary contact and if you go to say send help messages. If this was activated, if I press the power button three times in a row, it would send pictures and record sound with the Galaxy S5. So this way it'll send it to your primary contact, your emergency contact, so they can actually find out where you are. Uh, they'll have evidence of what's happening because the phone will try to capture what's going on in your surrounding area. 
Geo News is just basically extreme alerts in your area. Say if there's a tornado warning or something like that, you'll get an alert notification. And of course, if we go to emergency mode and if I were to activate it, so in emergency mode, your screen will turn black and gray. It'll turn off color. You have functions like say torch, which is basically the camera flash. You can turn it on. You can share your location and it does other things to save battery power. So it turns off Wi-Fi, it turns off uh, mobile data. So it's good in an emergency in which you need to preserve power in case you're lost, for example. There are two additional power saving modes, but not as dire as an emergency in which you're more restricted on functionality as, say, the emergency mode. Power saving mode basically has two functions. One is power saving regular mode, in which it restricts and blocks background data. So say Facebook won't update in the background for you, it, it'll just block it. It'll restrict performance, so it might lower the processing speed and stuff like that. And of course, grayscales, which it, the screen will turn black and gray. Ultra power saving mode does everything power saving mode does, but it goes above and beyond that. So as you can see, ultra power saving mode turns everything black and gray. It restricts a lot of performance. Your phone won't be as great as it usually is, but it's to conserve power. This is your home screen. Pressing the home screen doesn't do anything because, as I said, this is your home screen. Now, the feature I'm going to show you under About Device, this is pretty standard in Android, but I f figure it's pretty important for the Galaxy S5 anyway. And as of course, software updates, if there's an update available, this is where you would do it. You can customize it, and just tapping here would update now and look for an update. Uh, if you were to double tap the home screen, you get S Voice. What is the weather today? The sun is shining today. So moving on to the S Health app, um, here you can you know use things like the heart rate monitor. The heart rate monitor is actually positioned right next to the camera flash, which is right back here. So I have to place my index finger there, and it'll read my heart rate. I'm not sure how accurate it is because I don't usually you know measure my heart rate. I find it to be really annoying to use because half the time it doesn't read my finger, uh, you know, the heart rate. Also included in S Health is a pedometer in which it basically reads how many steps you've taken. So I started it. Uh, the first few steps you'll get zero because it's still trying to read what you're doing. But after that, um, the first few steps, as you can see, I took a pause, not doing anything, and it'll jump. And after that, I noticed that it's actually fairly accurate at reading how many steps I'm taking. You also have S Planner, which is a calendar app. Samsung Apps is basically the Samsung version of the Google Play Store. Of course, there is a built-in remote control which I went over in the review and it works pretty responsively. And of course, what's the neat thing is that once you add a remote uh, and you keep it in memory of the Guest 5, and you go to your lock screen, it'll actually stay on your lock screen. There's also smart rotation which basically means that if it's activated, the screen will refuse to rotate if you're rotating with the screen. So this is great for people who want to lie in bed on their side and look at the screen without having to have the phone rotate its orientation, which can be really annoying. And of course, the device itself is dust and water resistant. It's water resistant up to one meter for 30 minutes. And of course, if you look here at the bottom, you have the micro USB port, which actually supports USB 3.0. And of course, it's backwards compatible with USB 2.0, and it fits on the right side of the phone and it just works like that. Okay, so moving into the camera app, Samsung has actually removed a lot of features that people didn't use. For example, if you go to mode, some of them are just useless. You have dual camera, which uses the front facing and rear camera at the same time. And this is a pretty neat feature. Uh, there I am right now, hello. And uh, what it can basically do is record while this is happening. I can take a picture of this, and this is exactly what you see on the screen is exactly what record or take a picture of. And if for any reason you need more modes available, you can always just hit download. And of course, you'll go to the Samsung App Store, in which you can download more modes, which is always nice. Of course, you have a whole bunch of crazy amount of features available. You can, you know, record in 4K, which is ultra high definition, also known simply as 2160p. Of course, you have audio zoom, which basically means that if you're zooming in on an object on the screen, when you zoom into that object, the microphone will try to pick up audio from that particular subject or people talking that you zoomed in on and amplify its volume. And of course, you have a whole bunch of customization. You have ISO mode. Uh, you can adjust to auto. And if you want a lot of effects, you have effects you can tap. Of course, if there's not enough here, or if there's one missing that you would like, you can also press download and go to the Samsung store and download even more effects. There is slow motion recording mode. Of course, it cannot be done in 4K recording, but it can be done in high definition, regular high definition, which is 720p. And in the effects options of the camera app, if you select selective focus, uh, what this basically allows you to do is take a picture of some object that is 50 centimeters or closer. And actually, let me just show you an image I took. 
And if that object is 50 centimeters or closer, and the background uh, behind the object is further away, a good distance, actually, you have selective focus mode. And in the photo editing options in the gallery, if you tap this little icon here that shows up, uh, you can actually make the background blurry and the foreground clear or vice versa. So for example, type near focus, you notice a focusing change. So now the background has become blurry. And this object here, this little figurine, is clear, and now we'll do the opposite, where that figurine will become blurry, see? And of course, if you do pan focus, it puts everything back in uh, full focus. It looks pretty artificial at times, um, but if you don't have a DSLR, I guess this is one of the closest options you have. Of course, while you're looking at a picture, say in the gallery, um, you have some effect and editing options available to you. But you have even more control if you were to go back to, say, an album, then press the menu button and hit Studio. Studio basically opens kind of like a new app and allows you for more photo control and video editing control. You can have a video trimmer built in, a uh, whole bunch of other stuff. So it's a neat feature that you can edit and uh, videos and photos even further. So I hope that video was useful. Maybe it'll help you determine if you want to buy the S5 or not. Again, you should really watch the in-depth review video in which I go into much more details about the physical and software side of things. I even list the problems with this phone that I found. But nonetheless, I can certainly say it's the most feature-packed phone I've ever used from any manufacturer. And yes, a lot of the features are gimmicky, but there's a lot of useful features as well, like one-handed mode. You'll have to excuse the noise outside because the window's open, but anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter links in the video description. Again, be sure to check out the review, camera sample videos, gaming demo video, all the other good stuff. You can find links to those videos also in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.